Majestic Theater, which if you haven't been to the Majestic Theater, it's uh, it looks like a million dollars. It's got this classic old school charm, and uh, it's very analogous to what we did in Boston, what we did in Chicago in terms of putting a mixed martial arts event with all the music and all the lights and all the big screens and, and the excitement that takes place in that cage in an arena that uh, uh, looks more properly suited for Bob Hope um, or Frank Sinatra. So just a, a great venue, a magical venue that we were able to play tonight. Um, just a quick thank you to our TV partners at Fox Sports Network. We heard our show live tonight to 92 million homes from 8 to 10 p.m. where we are every Thursday night, NBC, Telemundo, Mundos, on a collective basis each uh, week we reach about 305 million homes. So um, great TV partners who are doing a, a lot of hard work on our behalf and helping us secure some terrific ratings let people all over the country see these, um, these terrific athletes do what they do inside of our cage. Um, I don't, don't want to sound at all melodramatic, but um, it never kind of ceases to amaze and humble me um, the level of, of courage and heart that um, these world-class athletes display when they get inside that cage. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of impact that goes on in a football game, there's a lot of impact that goes on in, in different sporting events, but none to the extent that goes on here and, and tonight. Uh, you saw one of our heavyweights, Eddie Sanchez, uh, take a right hand that would have put down most bulls and um, recuperate from it and show the kind of heart and determination and character to come back and ultimately uh, be in a position where he can win and prevail in that fight. And, uh, that takes a, a very unique breed of cat to be able to do that, to come back from the right hand like that, to be able to keep your head and to be able to not panic and be able to win a fight like that. Uh, for those of you who might not have seen Jared Hess uh, fight against Hector Lombard last year in our final, he came out of that fight with a new nickname, Braveheart, and um, he's obviously tonight suffered pretty substantial knee injury, uh, the extent of which we don't yet know, but um, you know, it, it, it was a bit of a caricature to call him Braveheart um, last year, but given what occurred tonight and given the absolute look of disdain on his face and the desire to do nothing but allow that fight to continue uh, after suffering an injury like that is just, uh, it's an anomaly in terms of athletics and it speaks to a, an amazing part of a, of a very high quality young man who uh, is, a, is a winner inside the cage and a winner outside the cage and we're very fortunate to have him fighting for us. Um, but that's, a, that's an awful lot of courage. Um, on to the fights themselves. Uh, as I said, we had Sanchez fight against Marcus Sursa. Uh, a very, very entertaining fight. Eddie put on a great show. Marcus put on a great show. Um, both of them I can't wait to see fight again. I, I announced it during the fight when I was on the show that uh, Eddie will be fighting in our heavyweight tournament uh, coming up in August, starting out on August 12th. Um, and just a terrifically entertaining fight to kick off the show. Obviously, um, the Alexander fight against Jared. Um, Alexander Shlomenko came to us from Siberia, Russia, as far away as from any fighter that we have that's fighting for us during this tournament. Um, has an amazing amount of skill, had a highlight reel type of uh, entree into our organization, um, had a difficult time getting into the country for his first fight, and we probably didn't see in his first fight the best Alexander Shlomenko. The fight tonight, he had a strategy. He, uh, he played that strategy out beautifully, and he beat um, what many people had thought would be the guy who would win this tournament at 185 pounds. So um, congratulations to Alexander Shlomenko, a tremendous, tremendous performance. Uh, the gentleman to my right, uh, Brian Baker, Brian thought from the beginning that he would be the favorite to win this tournament. He has the nickname The Beast, uh, and I expected to see a, a, a high-level, competitive, back-and-forth battle, just knowing what I know about Eric Shambari. Um, Brian obviously dominated that fight, and it begins to make me think that whereas we had thought that at 185 pounds, um, we had questioned whether or not somebody would emerge from that tournament and ultimately be competitive, uh, with Hector Lombard, I think a performance of this oak tonight uh, on behalf of Brian Baker starts to answer some of those questions. The matchup between these two gentlemen on my right and left is going to be a spectacular one in a month, and um, Brian Baker showed an awful lot. He has a tremendous standard game. He's a magical wrestler. And, um, that, that's part of the magic of this tournament is guys can use this tournament in a very short period of time in a very condensed window of a huge national television audience to send them 
message to people about who they are in this sport. And, uh, and Brian Baker continues to do that in a very dramatic fashion. Um, uh, Mark Ashiro, and I don't know if Mark is here, um, had been given an opportunity to participate in our tournament. Mark Sursley. Pardon me? Mark Sursley. <laughs> the other Mark. Oh. <laughs> uh, had been given an opportunity to participate in our tournament. Uh, Nick Mamalis was brought in um, and was not expected to win this fight by, I think, anyone but him and his camp who put on an amazing performance. As, as uh, what do they say, as calm, as, as cool as the other side of the pillow. Uh, in control of that fight from the beginning and uh, ended the fight and won it. And it puts, uh, it puts us in a very, very unique spot. I think it speaks to the issue of this tournament format, the fact that we don't give anybody an easy fight. Eddie Alvarez had to fight Josh Neer. Uh, Hector Lombard was scheduled to fight Paulo Filo. Um, you know, our, our, our champions have been put in tough, and the guys who have been given a free ride into the tournament or have been given an entry space into the tournament have been put in tough. Um, Mark Ashiro had his hands full tonight, lost the fight, and the gentleman who beat him uh, we don't exactly know what our plans are yet, but I can tell you there will be some plans. So, um, other than that, great night of fights, great arena. Uh, I'm going to turn the microphone over uh, to Brian Baker to my right, and then to Alexander and, and some of the other fighters to make some comments. But uh, a great night and a terrific venue and another, what I hope was, when I get a chance to see a great TV show. Brian. Uh, thank you, Bjorn. I'd like to thank uh, Bellator and Bjorn and just for giving me this opportunity to go and express myself and spread God's glory. Um, he really is my faith and my provider, so um, I do all things for him. I'd like to thank uh, Eric Chabari. Um, I respect him as a fighter. I mean, he's an amazing, strong dude, and I hope he just keeps his head up and keeps pushing on. Um, I got a dream and a goal to uh, become the best fighter I could be, and um, that I got that belt in my mind. i um, really excited to uh, face Hector Lombard. Um, I don't know if he respects me as a fighter, but I'm going to show him. I'm going to come prepared, ready to defeat him. So, thank you. I'd like to just turn the mic over for a minute to Alexander Shemeko, who will be facing Brian Baker in a month in uh, Louisville, 